I would like to show you how to replace a snare drum or any other drum track like a kick drum or tom tom track with the SPL drum exchanger. So let me show you the session that I'm working on at the moment. And then of course solo the snare drum track that I'm talking about so you can listen to it and hear what it sounds like in the original version. I'm going to open the edit window of Pro Tools and have a look at the snare drum track there. Now the first thing I'm going to do of course is open the drum exchanger. Now when you open the drum exchanger plugin, you'll immediately see that no drum kit has been loaded and all the controls are set to a certain default position. And that default position is set so that you can easily sample or replace a snare drum. So if you have an ordinary snare drum track and you open the drum exchanger and you load up a kid, it should immediately be able to replace most of the hits, if not all. Now the first thing you want to do is load up a kid. So you should go into the sample section and press on load and select the kit you want to load into the drum exchanger. So in this case, I'm going to load a snare drum sample and open it. There you go. Now the four buttons above the red drum kit are banks. I have not just loaded a snare drum. I have loaded an entire SPL drum kit and not only one, but four, and I can switch between them on the fly. So here's bank number two and bank number three and of course number four. The picture of the drum kit below represents all the individual kit pieces of every set and I can switch between those on the fly as well. So I have a snare drum, or I can load up a kick drum, or a number of tom-toms. But for now, we're gonna go with the snare drum. Now, what you should do first is select a part of the snare drum track that contains snare drum in all articulations and all ways of playing that represent what you wanna replace in the song. You can then loop that part so you have continuous playback while you're adjusting the drum exchanger. So let's listen to that and start replacing. Now, I am going to use the input gain control to determine the input level of the original sound and adjust the signal's volume. And don't worry, these adjustments have no influence whatsoever on the recognition and the level of the trigger. Sometimes an input signal comes in too hot, which is then indicated by the overload LED. That overload LED is post input gain, so it indicates not only if the signal is too hot, but also if the overloading is taking place after the input gain. Now the next stop is the original section. You can activate solo on the original module, so you will listen only to the original signal. This will allow you to concentrate on that specific signal and make all necessary adjustments. The first two controls on the top are the high and the low pass filters. These filters allow you to cut the low or high end of the original signal to focus on a narrower frequency range. These settings, however, have no influence whatsoever on the sound recognition or the trigger module, so they don't affect the sound of the sample. Now, Typical uses of these filters include filtering of rumble and low frequency interferences with the high pass filter and the suppression of hi hat crosstalk with a low pass filter. With the transient designer below, you can shape the original sound. You can add attack, take attack away, and do the same with the sustain. You can add some or take some away. Let's have a quick listen. Now I'm adding attack, and of course taking attack away. Now since I really want to replace the original signal as much as I can, I don't really need to play around with the transient designer this time. But what would be interesting for you to know is the trigger button. Now when the trigger button is activated, the transient designer processor of the original module also affects the trigger module. And that can be very useful when drum sounds are too resonant and therefore not easily recognizable or distinguishable. This usually affects toms and bass drums rather than snares. 
Now the ducking feature below reduces the level of the original signal for a moment. The timing of the ducking is preset and cannot be modified. Attack is set to 1 millisecond and release to 10 milliseconds. So level reduction takes place for a very short time only. Overall, the ducking can be set from 0 dB to minus 40 dB. So the higher the ducking value, the more of the original signal is overshadowed by the sample. So if I was to turn the ducking control down, you would immediately hear how the original sound is compressed. I'm going to bring it down all the way for you to hear. Of course, this is a very extreme setting, which we won't be needing for this example. So I'm going to bring it to a setting where I like it. Now let's unsolo the original section and then move over to the next section, which is the trigger section and solo that so we can hear better what we're doing with the trigger signal. Soloing this section will allow you to set the frequency and the bandwidth parameters as precisely as possible, but also to check for all other module parameters and optimize them. Now, the first two controls on the trigger module are the frequency and the bandwidth or Q controls. In most cases, you can actually set these controls by ear. Now, the precision and the speed at which sound is recognized depends a lot on these two controls. You can set the frequency as close as possible to the drum's fundamental frequency and define the bandwidth as precisely as possible. And to make fine adjustments, always use the solo function. It helps you a lot to hear what you're doing. Now I'm going to bring up the Q value to narrow the bandwidth and then search for the best frequency for my trigger signal. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the default of the drum exchanger is set for snare drum, so I don't have to do a whole lot here. So the next thing I'm going to do is move to the gain controls of the trigger section. Now you can use the two gain controls above the trigger meters to adjust the level for the dual threshold recognition. Now the left hand gain control determines the level for the transients of the original signal. If the signal does not have a wide dynamic range, you can improve the resolution of the parameter by increasing the gain value for transients. So as a useful rule of thumb, it is recommended to take the highest transient as a reference in order to take full advantage of the meters and then set the green arrows just underneath the faintest transient. But let me first adjust the transient gain. And then I'm going to adjust the green arrow below, which corresponds to the threshold. In other words, it determines when a sample is to be played back. So I'm going to bring that up and put it just underneath the faintest snare drum signal. Try to not include any cross bleeds. There you go. The gain control determines the level for signal recognition by the triggers. So if the signal is too low, you can increase the level. And if the signal is too high, you should reduce it. If you want to be sure that the sample played back is always the loudest, you can increase the gain value until the peak signal reaches the upper region of the trigger meters and the red mark lights up. I always try to keep a balance between the gain control and the position of the green arrows on the level trigger meters to guarantee a better sound recognition. And there's a very easy way for you to find out if your settings are correct. Because if in the play button the LED is lighting up and the two green arrows are lighting up at the same time, that means that a sample is being triggered. And I've just seen that it isn't always lighting up, so let me bring down the two arrows a little more to increase the sensitivity. And that should work now. Now the red arrow determines the threshold for a rim shot to be triggered. So I'm going to bring that arrow down to increase the sensitivity. And then I'm going to take the trigger section out of the solo mode to listen to the sample. Now, in order to make sure that I listen correctly to everything that happens to the sample, I'm going to solo the sample section. And there I hear some misfires, so I'm going to bring the trigger threshold up to comb those out. That's much better. 
The rim control here sets the rim shot volume in relation to the drum sample. So here is an example with a lot of rim. But in this example, I don't want too much of that ringing sound, so I'm going to bring it down. Then, of course, you can use the transient designer for the sample section to shape the sound of only the sample. You can add or take away attack, or add and take away sustain. In this case, I'm going to take some of the sustain away because I want a really dry, funky snare drum that goes really well with the original one. And now comes a very important feature. The dynamics control determines how the drum exchanger reacts to level variations in the original signal and plays back loud or soft samples accordingly. So the more you turn the knob to the left, the faster the volume of the played back samples increases. On the contrary, if you turn the knob to the right, the volume of the samples increases more slowly. So I'm going to keep that on the right for now. Now here is an example for a possible application. If you want to even out a fluctuating drum sound with a lot of variations and a lot of dynamics, you can turn the knob to the left, and the further you turn, the higher the chances are that samples with the same volume are played back. That way, it is very easy to even out drums with a big volume curve when you want drums that are very even and very regular. If you want to catch the full dynamics of the original signal, and you wish to replace ghost notes but the sounds are too loud, you can turn the dynamics knob to the right to increase the dynamic range. By doing so, the loudest samples will be played only with the loudest drum hits. So you can totally match the behavior of the sample to the original behavior of the snare drum you recorded. Of course, then there is the tune control. And that allows you to tune the drums in your sample library. Now the tune control changes the pitch of the samples in one octave steps. The scale is divided in 12 semitone steps and you can tune it down all the way or all the way up. And in our case, I'm gonna be slightly above the middle. And now of course, I'm gonna unsolo the sample section and listen to the full thing. Now I'm going to go to a very important knob, the dry-wet control. The dry-wet control determines the ratio between the sample and the original signal. The ratio ranges from 0% on the left to 100% on the right, where 0% means only the original signal is played back, and 100% means only the sample is played back. When monitoring, the sample module solo function has the same effect as turning the dry-wet control to 100%. Now I want this snare drum track to sound alive, so I want to leave a bit of that crossbleed in the track so that in case the drum exchanger misses one or two ghost notes that I didn't manage to get in with the threshold, it still captures that and it still displays it. So a good figure for that would be to set the dry wet to about 80 or 75%. There we go, now the snare drum has a little cross bleed and a lot of the sample, and that gives it a very authentic and alive feeling. Now last but certainly not least, and very importantly, let's go to the output gain control. Why is that important? Well, generally speaking, you will need to reduce the level considering that the drum exchanger tends to increase the level. Suppose you mix the sample with an already hot snare drum, or that it might be necessary for you to emphasize the attack in the original and in the sample, you can almost take for granted that the output signal will overload. Now, if this were the case, as is in this example, as you can see, you have to reduce the output level. I'm gonna set this so it doesn't overload, but it still gives me as much level as possible. I'm just making sure that I have as much of the dynamic range as possible, but I'm trying to avoid distortion. And now I'm gonna unsolo the snare drum channel. And there we go. That's a replaced snare drum. Let me bypass the drum exchanger.
sounds a lot cleaner and pretty funky. So if you want to check out the Drum Exchanger plugin for yourself, you can go online to www.spl.info. You can download the Drum Exchanger plugin and all the sample libraries. You can install them on your computer and test them for 14 days without any limitations or restrictions. So thanks for watching. Have a lot of fun making music and experimenting around. And until next time, bye bye.